Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boiter. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate today Gaudate Sunday. You're wearing pink. The candle that we will light is also pink, a sign that we are one step closer on our journey towards the joy of Christmas. We light now that pink candle, a very visible, tangible sign of this journey that we are on in this Advent season. Come before the Lord, aware that we are sinners, loved sinners, but still aware that we've hurt one another, what we've said or done. And we ask the Lord now to forgive us. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. To bring good tidings to, to the afflicted, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with the garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul shall exalt in my God. My soul shall exalt in my God. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. My soul shall exalt in my God. 
For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul shall exalt in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. My soul shall exalt in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophesying, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed. He did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. They said to him then, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they've been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one whom you do not know, even he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. This took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Can you believe it has been almost nine months since COVID-19 turned our lives upside down? Nine months since this became our new normal. Nine months since your community of belonging changed from the hundreds you attended Mass with physically to the thousands who were sharing this virtual experience with you. If not today then at some point during the next few days. As churches slowly reopen, 
always within the limits of health and safety protocols determined by the government, we're discovering that fewer people than normal are returning. And it's worth asking ourselves why. Some people are still concerned for their health, the health of those around them, and they're waiting for a vaccine, and we pray that it'll be here soon. Others have found that the homilies available on virtual platforms like these are of a better quality, and so people feel more spiritually financially, intellectually satisfied. And obviously it helps that you can fast forward through the boring bits. Others have felt betrayed by their parish priests who disappeared for months, effectively abandoning their community. And now they feel no obligation to return or to support their parish. Lastly, Let's not forget the power of habit and the seduction of the convenient. Over these nine months, we've unlearned the habits of a lifetime. We've learned new ones, for better or worse. In this brave new world, we have to ask ourselves, what does community mean for us today? What does being present to one another mean? And how can we put flesh on the, the digital bones of this community? I am sure that barrels of ink will be spilt over this as we try to read and understand the signs of our time. As you can tell, I have more questions than answers. But ultimately, it's as simple as this. Does our community help us to be missionary disciples of Christ? Firstly, I think we have to acknowledge that for the Christian, no matter how important community is, community is not an end in itself. Community has purpose. Whether it's the community of St. Martin de Porres in Orlando West, or the community of those participating in this uh, Jesuit Institute Mass. Community can bless us, it can enrich us, it can feed us, it can strengthen us. And when it's done all of those things, most importantly, it functions as the John the Baptist for the members of its community by pointing us towards Christ. John boldly proclaimed that he was not the Christ, that he was just a voice crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And so the mission of the community is to point us towards Christ, to teach us about Christ, so that when he comes we may recognize him, not only in the transcendent glory of the kingdom, but also the broken and bruised glory of those around us. The prophet Isaiah gives the mandate of the missionary disciple as someone who brings glad tidings to the poor, proclaims liberty to captives and release of prisoners. I don't know how to do any of those things from the comfort of my armchair or from the safety of my bench in the parish church. If our community truly exists, not as an end in itself, but to prepare us for mission, then maybe it doesn't matter where you are in the world right now, whether your community is a virtual one or a physical one as long as you are being that good news to the poor, as long as you bring the message of freedom and new life to those at the margins of our church and of society. Let's put it differently. Has my community helped me to be more rooted in my faith? Has it made me more aware of and attentive to 
my connectedness to others, if I become more gentle, am I more patient and loving and forgiving? And if not, maybe it's time to change the channel. Coming together as this community, however it is we define ourselves, we proclaim our faith, the faith of the God who has brought us to new life. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers to the Lord. We pray for Christians throughout the world that we may discover new ways of doing and being community so that we may continue to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all of those affected by the COVID pandemic, for the sick and for those who have lost loved ones. We ask the Lord to bless and protect those who have lost jobs and those who go hungry and homeless. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our country, that there will be an end to the corruption that steals the future of our youth, and that our public servants will live up the high expectations we have of them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families and our friends, that the Lord will bless and protect us, helping us grow in love, for one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray in silence now for our own needs. Lord God, we ask you to hear our prayers, those that we've spoken out loud, but also those that we pray in our hearts. For we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin.
pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Almighty God, may the sacrifice of our worship be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, that without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, with Buti Tlachale, our bishop, with Dan Kansaki, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, 
St. Ignatius of Loyola, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. We stand before the Lord as the sons and daughters of the loving Father. Let us pray then as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. So, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
now, let's just pray. Lord God, we implore your mercy that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, giving God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.